If you're wondering what grit to use to sand your floor, I'm gonna go over that right now. Normally, the way you do it is you run your edges with a 50 grip. This is for the uh, edger. And then you follow up that with a 50 grip hummel. And if you look on the inside, it's got the grip written on the inside. This is a 50. Now after you've done those two, then you go back with an 80 grip edger. And that normally is all you're going to need on the edges. Now it saves a lot of time and trouble to follow up the edges with an 80 grip drum sander. You just have to be careful to set the drum down and give it a really smooth motion and that'll help clean up a lot of the 80 grit edges. So that's the proper procedure. Now that's most of the heavy sanding. After that you always want to do a very thorough buff with 100. Now what I like to use is a 100 grit waffle disc on this is what we call a 6 disc head. And obviously it's got six random orbital heads. You put your 100 grit paper on there. And what I like about this tool is it's more aggressive than some of the other machines. So you can blend the edges that you've done with the edger with the feel that you've done with the drum sander. Where they come together is always like a tricky spot. And this 100 grit 6 disc is highly effective at blending those two together and making it look seamless. Now this is a specialized head. You can buy one of these for six, eight hundred dollars, or I think you can rent these now at uh, some of the big box rental stores. So you can do it yourself without having to buy these. Now there's another way you can do a hundred. That's with the square head buffer sander. That uses a screen. It's actually a screen. It's, it's rough on both sides, so you can use it on this side for a while, then flip it over and use it on this side for a while. And you should always use like a white pad or a red pad that goes with it. And you can rent this equipment as well at some of the big box stores. So if you, if you prefer or it's available, you can also use this as your 100 grit buff but you just have to go a little bit slower be a little bit thorough and then just check your edges and be sure it blends in and when you're using this always go with the grain you don't want to cross the grain you don't want this to come across like that because it'll leave little fish hook lines you always want to keep it with the grain just like that and this will give you a really smooth transition between the edge and the field so you can use that. And that's it. When you finish your 100 grit, that normally is going to be everything that you need to sand and then go ahead and finish the floor. Now, if you're putting down a really dark stain, you need to go up one more time. You need to buff with 100 and then buff with 120 and then water pop your floor before you put down the stain. Hopefully you don't do a lot of dark stain because they're a ginormous pain in the butt and nobody likes to do them and you should charge extra. Other than that, the only other thing you're probably going to need is a 220 grit round head screen. Now for this screen, it comes with a round white pad, about an inch thick and 16 inches across, 16 inch pad. And you also use a different head. This is a flat head. It's just got little knobs on it and it grips the white pad like that. And you use the six disc and the flat head with the same buffer. The continuous orbital motion buffer. Now 220 is good for abrading your finish 
in between coats. It's just a very light top abrasion. It's rough on both sides. It's actually a screen. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can use this side for a while and flip it over and use the other side for a while. So I like to put the first coat as a penetrating sealer or a stain and then three top coats of water-based finish. So you put down your stain when you fully finish buffing with the 100, wait 24 hours, come back the next day, and you can put down two or three coats of water-based finish because the water-based finish dries very fast and you can just pile them on top of each other. But I like to just put down two and then wait 24 hours, come back the next day, lightly abrade the floor with the 220 grit. And that will just make it super smooth and it will clean up any dust or dirt that fell into it off the walls or came out of the HVAC vents. And then you give it a thorough vacuum and then you can put down your third top coat of finish. And it looks amazing. This is basically everything you're going to need to sand your floor. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Happy sanding!